Hey everybody, good news everyone. You may have already watched my video where I walk through how to create my graphic in Photoshop. It's about 50 minutes or so long and I'm taking you from start to finish about the choices that I personally made. Um, that might not be for you and you might not just want to see me rambling and, and forgetting where all the options are. So I'm creating this video as well where I'm just going to go straight to the point with some of the tools and techniques that you'll need in your graphics. Okay, so this is going to be very much cut down, shortened version, just showing you where the tools are and how they're used and then up to you to go ahead and make them a picture of when you want. So I've already jumped straight into Photoshop and I've set my graphic up in terms of rather than pixels into millimeters. I've set the right size from the brief and I'm going to make a far name for this one. Daring to dream short video version one. Uh, press create. First up, you may want to know how to make guides. So guides are very useful for when we want to uh, lay out our pages. In order to make a Blu-ray cover for this particular one, I'm gonna need two guides, one at 126 and one at 140. Okay, depending on your future projects, please check for the measurements for those ones. Now, Photoshop, generally speaking, is broken into three different areas. On the side here on the left, you've got your various tools. Up here are the options for these tools. And up here are properties of layers and colors and stuff like that, okay? You've also got various things like filters and that sort of stuff added up here. I can't imagine many of you are gonna need these for this particular task, but they're there if you wish to look at them. And there is an extensive help menu with tutorials for those people who uh, wish to, to use that sort of thing. Okay, uh, so if I want to import an image, then I can either copy and paste from the internet, I can go to File and Place Embedded, and that opens up my uh, images folder. Or if I've already got images already saved somewhere, for instance, in my assets folder, then one of the things I can do is simply drag and drop it straight in. When I drag and drop it straight in, it gives me these options here where I can stretch or, or, or squish it in some way. If I press a tick, it keeps it. Now those options to move it around, I'm using the arrow uh, tools up here. If I hover over any of these options, not only does it show me um, what the tool does, it also gives me the shortcut links. So the move tool, for instance, is a, is a V. And the more you use Photoshop, the more useful it gets. It's not useful to learn them if you've got no intention of doing Photoshop ever again in your life there. But they're there in case you, you're interested in that sort of thing. So that's the move tool. Let's just move it around. By default, Photoshop sort of tries to snap it into place for you. If you want to resize, Control T for transform. That allows me to transform the image, to move it around. I can resize it, I can rotate it. I can hold Shift and squish it. I can hold uh, control and warp it. So this allows me to pick a point. So if I wanted to change the perspective a little bit, um, it's a bit of a dangerous one, this one. Sometimes it can go really, really wrong. But I can make some really cool effects like that. If I'm happy, I press the tick. If I'm not, I press the circle. I'm quite happy, so I'm gonna keep it like that, okay? Um, down the side here, if I right click on any of these tools, it gives me multiple options. So if you're following a YouTube tutorial uh, and you're not sure where that button is, then more often than not, it's because of that. If for whatever reason you manage to accidentally break this or you manage to close some of these tab groups so they don't exist anymore and you're like, oh my God, no, no, I've absolutely broken it. Oh, well, how am I gonna get my layers back? You simply go to Windows, uh, Workspace, Reset Essentials, and everything comes back to normal. Okay, by default, I usually get rid of the learn tool because it annoys me. Uh, so further down, I've got my football here. If I wanted to cut something out, then I'm going to be using marquees or I'm going to be using polygon lasso tools or I'm going to be using the selection tools. So each one here is useful for, for different things. The rectangular one is shockingly useful for getting rid of uh, rectangles of graphics. Um, oh yeah, when I copy an image from the internet, if I try and edit it, I'm going to get an error that looks a little bit like this. It's a smart object that's not editable. Uh, that's because it's semi-protected and I just, it's got this little thing there that tells me that. I have to right click and um, rasterize the layer. There we go. If I do that now, 
I can delete it. Like on any program, I can edit and undo that particular thing as well. I can also toggle between it. I don't find it useful, but some people do. Um, so that's a rectangle. I've of course got an ellipse, a circle. I can make it a perfect circle by holding shift or an oval by not. I can also use things like rows and columns and that sort of stuff as well. You may have noticed then that I had that tool open and I and I got rid of it and I didn't seem to do it. And that's because I was using a keyboard shortcut. Control D, which is deselect. Okay, so it's up here as well. So I can use the selection tool like this and then go to select, deselect or control D. In the selection tools, you have all sorts of different things there. And if you can get your mind around it, it's so much easier using these tools. So for instance, if I wanted to select everything except that logo, this logo here, then trying to select everything else is difficult. Unless I select it using this tool here, go to select and inverse my selection. That means it selects everything except that. And now I've deleted everything except that. So there's a lot of really cool um, things there. Well, it could basically speed up your life. Now let's get another graphic in here. Let's get um, this one. So there we go. Got that graphic now in there. I'm going to use this one now for, for various different things. First of all, I'm going to resize it a bit better so I can see clearly more of the players. I'm going to be adding some advanced tools to this. I'm going to rasterize that layer and I'm going to use a layer mask. Okay, so what a layer mask is, is it allows me to cover up parts of the image. Okay, it's a temporary thing, which means I can undo it, which is useful. I can't really undo the eraser. I can undo it one step here, um, but eventually the steps you can undo will disappear and I, and I won't be able to do any more. Um, so if I want to cut out this background now and maybe an hour from now, uh, oh, actually, you know, what? I should have kept that background. I need that color. I can't, it's gone. So one of the ways that we can avoid that is by using layer masks. Uh, they're an advanced tool. So they will get you extra marks. And so rather than using this rubber, you're going to be using the paintbrush tool. The layer masks, which are here, they use the black and white image. OK, so the black, if I color it in, makes it disappear. Now, it's not an eraser. It's not disappeared. You can see there I've got a little black line in that box there. If I change that to white, I can now bring that back and it's it seems pointless. You can be, I'll just use a rubber. I'll just use a rubber. It'd be fine. The amount of time that has saved me, where I've accidentally got rid of something I didn't know, or I've been selecting things, and I've and I've uh, accidentally been cutting out some character, and I, I've, I've removed an arm that I didn't mean to. Okay, this is a very useful tool for you. Okay, so try and look to see if what you want to do for that. You also notice that my, at the moment my brush is quite sort of blurry. Uh, that's just a brush type I've got selected. You can change that on here. So at the moment it's a soft brush. I can go for a harder brush and then it's going to be much more like that. It's up to you, your personal choices. And there'll be times when one of those is better than the other. Let's say, for instance, that I wanted to, to blend two graphics together a bit more. Let's say if I was creating a montage of different things. Let's add this graphic in. So. Let's add a, a layer mask to this graphic. I'm going to be using my paintbrush tool. I'm going to change, um, I'm going to get rid of some of this here straight away. I'm just going to get rid of as much of that as I want using the hard brush for the moment. This is going to look a little bit naff because I'm going to be quite quick, but you can be better than me. So if I wanted to start to merge different bits together, then one of the things I could start to do would be changing things like the opacity of my brush. Um, the opacity of the brush is going to change how much it removes. So there was 100%, it got rid of all of it. At uh, 35%, it's going to get rid of some of it. See there a little bit more. If I was to change that even lower, perhaps even 10%, then and I'm like dabbing it like a sponge, like a sponge. So do that there, then what you can do if you're clever enough and if the images aren't too dissimilar, so you can start to merge and blend two stuff. 
So I've just uh, cut out another England football player and put it in the background, or the foreground here. Um, so Clone Stamp Tools would be my next one that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, so Clone Stamp allows me to uh, copy aspects of the image in some way. So I can use the Clone Stamp by selecting a layer, uh, clicking on a player, um, I'm pressing Alt on my keyboard, and that's going to allow me to select the top of this nine. And if you see my paintbrush now, there's a little blue mark, and that's because actually what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to draw that nine again. It clones the bit that you're clicking on, and it's quite good if you want to sort of touch up an image, if you want to give someone more or less hair then this is the, the tool that you use for that. Uh, you just have to keep dipping into the bit that you want to keep each time, uh, and just picking that color up. And it will basically work with anything, um, as long as it's sort of going to work like that, then yeah, stuff like that. You know, so you can you can add extra things to, to the graphic, okay? If I wanted to make um, a particular person lose their hair. I've got no idea who this person is. Hopefully I'm not going to offend you. But I can then use this to touch this up and to make this character a uh, character. Makes it sound like a video game. Uh, I can add or remove bits of their hair and face. Um, obviously for this particular project, not going to be useful at all, but perhaps for who knows, one of the later iMedia products, if you're doing things like uh, the game design, you want to create some alien style characters, then yeah, why not? You can remove everyone's hair or, or give them mullets or something like that. Whichever, you know, is going to be appropriate for the assignment brief each time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really just playing now, to be honest with you, so. Right, so once I've got my, my character in there and I'm happy with the way this is starting to look, um, then what else can I add to this? I can uh, use the paint bucket tool, very standard. Uh, gra gradient tool allows me to paste in sort of a, a line of, of stuff. It really works best when we've got things like shapes. So let's, let's do shapes. This one's a rectangle tool. There are custom shapes around the rectangles, that sort of stuff. If I color that in for the moment, it's gonna probably go black, yeah? Uh, I can change the colors um, by changing the fill or going to my recently used colors or allow me to pick from a selection. Um, I can have the gradient tool here. I could just change the the colors at the moment it starts at black so they can change that to move to white uh, red um, and then you just change where on the gradient it starts and ends um, if that's useful to you brilliant um, I don't know if you will be much call for it in this task um, let's go almost flag like there you go um, what else have I got on this? Um, I've got the zoom tool, lets me zoom in and out, and there are some obviously extra t buttons there. Uh, playing with the different uh, layers, if I want things to move up and down, I simply drag and drop them um, through the different layers. It's as simple as that. Um, if I want to have any special effects at all, then I can do so with adjustment layers. So adjustment layers allow me to add all sorts of shiny stuff. Uh, some of these are great, some of these are I don't understand how anyone uses them, but the best way is to just to click on them and, and have a little look. If I go to posterize, so clicked on that and it instantly changed everything on the screen. I can change the levels and it will change what it's doing on the page. It's changing everything because whenever you just have an adjustment layer, it changes everything on the page, uh, unless I right click and create a clipping mask. And now it just affects that football layer. And that's how I can start to have uh, adjustment layers uh, for each individual bit, depending on what it is I want to do, use it for. So color balance. So for this is still on the football. Um, I can make every more yellow or pink or green or whatever I want. That's horrible. horrible yeah. uh, let's go to the main footballers in the background, adjust them. Let's adjust their uh, levels that allows me to make things lighter or brighter by moving the dark and light and the midtones. So it basically changes the way this acts on the screen. Some of this is useful, some of it I'll use pretty much every time I do a graphic, but in this particular case here, uh, I don't know how useful it is. Have a go, have a play, 
these are the basics and realistically it's about you experimenting with them you've got a lot of time to get good and so pick a subject and see what you can achieve thank you and um look forward to seeing what you're gonna make